Thank you, David. It's really good to see you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I was uh, in the Middle East when uh, the 9 11 attacks happened. And uh, I just so happened to be in Baghdad in 2000, 2003 when U.S. bombs uh, fell in my neighborhood and U.S. tanks rolled down the street uh, occupying Iraq after the 2003 war. Um, so I saw firsthand the, the immediate um, reaction to 9-11, uh, what Phyllis Penis calls the 9-12. Like, I, I lived that firsthand uh, in back what happened because of what happened in September 12th uh, and the reactionary, uh, militarized, uh, unjustified response to the, to the attacks. Um, I also lived through the very heavy price that Muslim Americans have paid since 9-11 uh, after immigrating to the United States. Um, I have uh, experienced firsthand uh, discrimination and Islamophobia in the United States, uh, whether it is at airports or works, workplaces or, or within our polit political discussions uh, in this country. So in a way, I've had uh, the first-hand opportunity to, to experience both sides of um, what happened in the last two decades, uh, whether it is the U.S. foreign policy, the militarized foreign policy uh, out there in, in Iraq and the Middle East, or whether it is the discourse here in Washington, D.C., where I have lived for the last 15 years. And I want to say, like, unfortunately, not much has changed. And this is to address the, the assignments by, by David. Not, not much has changed in Washington, D.C. Like, we saw the rhetoric that came from President Biden um, when he withdrew from Afghanistan 20 years after uh, 9-11. But the rhetoric doesn't really s signify a strategic change in U.S. thinking, in U.S. analysis, or U.S. engagement with the world. Um, and in a way, President Biden said, you know, we have to withdraw because it's not really good for us to be there. And uh, he kind of sort of blamed, quote unquote, the Afghans for what's going on, the collapse that has been going on in the country, et cetera. I didn't really feel like a, a remorseful uh, analysis of a strategic disaster that has taken place in 20 years. Um, what I heard from President Biden and, and, and others in DC is very similar rhetoric to the one that was used um, after the US withdrew from Iraq, which is a rhetoric that blames Iraqis for the failure of the US um, interventionist project. Uh, Iraqis were not ready for democracy. You know, they're kind of too stuck with their ancient hatred. Sunnis hate Shia and Shia hate Sunnis. And they don't really like democracy. They don't not really have a, a good taste for it. Um, and we heard the same about Afghans, that Afghans, um, they were, you know, we, we could give them training on how to use weapons, but we can't train them to have determination to, to fight for the future of their country. <laughs> so, like, uh, there was no actual moment of realization that wars uh, were a strategic mistake. They were a disaster. They were uh, came out wrong. The wrong response to 9-11. Uh, I've never heard that from uh, the powers to be in Washington, D.C. So I think for me, the number one takeaway is that our country has not learned its lesson for the last 20 years. That is the number one, the most important, the most devastating um, 
analysis for what happened in 20 years is that we are still at a place to make the same mistakes because the underlying assumptions for how to engage with other countries around the world have not changed. Uh, we still have two main um, interventionist uh, discourses in Washington, D.C. One is the humanitarianist, the humanitarian interventionism, uh, mostly coming from the Democratic Party, which, you know, justifies U.S. dropping bombs for someone else's good. Like, we have to bomb other countries for their own good uh, to save women and support LGBT communities and um, bring democracy, kill the bad guys for their own, for own good. And, and then there is the, the more hawkish Republican uh, discourse about you know, taking the fight out there instead of them coming to kill us. Um, I ha we, don't, we haven't really created a space, and it's really, really sad that 20 years into the after 9-11 that we haven't really had, we don't really have an established space within the establishment in Washington, D.C. Uh, to shift that larger um, foreign policy. Uh, um, the other thing, so like, that's that's like my number one um, take. The, se the second take, which I alluded to earlier, is about uh, Muslim Americans. Muslim Americans continue to pay a very, very heavy price to the 9-11 attacks. Muslim Americans continue to be uh, vilified and othered by uh, mainstream politicians um, to date. And, you know, we, we see these Islamophobic tropes um, repeated in the media almost every day. Um, it has become a part of the uh, collective psyche in, in, in the U.S. and um, whether it is attacks on members of Congress because of their uh, ethnic and religious uh, background, whether it's attacks on uh, members of our communities, whether it is U.S. policies that directs um, resources and um, policies against Muslim and Arab American communities. Uh, that is directly linked to the policies of, uh, you know, post 9/11, and those have not been dealt with head on as well. So, I mean, I, I've, I've met David. You and I met a long time ago, um, like, uh, and, and I feel like we ha the space that, like, spaces that the, you know David has created, you know, fills other people on the call have grown, uh, we, we have definitely um, established a, more of a foothold on having this analysis out there. But it is still an alternative analysis. Uh, we are the rebels who might be called to CNN or MSNBC once or twice a year as like a, uh, the, like, you know, sideline revolutionary uh, like out of the ordinary analysis, you know? But uh, when it comes to the mainstream voices in DC, uh, unfortunately, we're still stuck. We're still stuck with almost the same kind of rhetoric. Um, and uh, I, I would end this by saying that the first day I met David, it's been like maybe 14 years ago or something, we met uh, through this um, uh, network to oppose US bases. Uh, and um, it has gotten much worse since the U.S. spending on militarism has gotten worse. The percentage of how much money we spend on um, military spending every year, uh, you know, percentage of that to the full budget in the U.S. has gotten much worse. You know, back in the day, it used to be, uh, you know, like in the, the, the description. 50% of the discretionary spending was going to uh, militarized spending. Now it's approaching 60%. Um, the number of bases around the world is still huge. Um, so it is unfortunately not a good, not a good uh, um, trajectory. And we will continue to build our, uh, you know, 
political power we will continue to build our analysis but at the same time i think it's it is sobering and it's important to realize how vast uh, how heavy of a task it is uh, to, to change the uh, direction of this massive you know tanker that we are on called u.s foreign policy to change its direction from the the current one to a different one let me stop here there. Thank you.